Some of my biggest questions that I've dealt with when trying to plan for social studies lessons is the question of breadth versus depth. How in depth do you go into any topic? How long do you spend on a certain topic? What gets covered? What gets left out? Am I teaching too much or too little information? It can be such a challenging thing, but today I want to share the five step approach to answer this question with ease. Hello and welcome to episode one of We Teach History, the weekly show here on the Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies YouTube channel designed to specifically provide tips and strategies for social studies teachers. I'm your host, Sarah, and today's topic is very near and dear to my heart because it's something that both myself and my husband, who also teaches social studies, have struggled with a lot when we're trying to plan. I'm sure you know the frustration of not really being sure what to cover. Sometimes it also feels like social studies gets left out of a lot of the different national standards and that sort of thing. Sure, we're in Common Core, but it's really a very small collection of standards that don't necessarily apply to all the different elements and content areas within social studies. Between the two of us, my husband Jake and I have taught in four different schools, and this was a struggle we faced in every school. You see, a lot of schools don't have a set pacing guide or plan about what's to be taught and covered, and some do, but within that plan, there's still a lot of flexibility. And flexibility is amazing, but it also leads to a lot of tough questions. And it can be tricky since there's no right or wrong system of how social studies should be taught. But we have found using this five-step approach has been very helpful in making sure you're covering what's most important while also making sure it's a meaningful unit that you're planning. Step number one is to backwards plan. If we just focus on going lesson by lesson or unit by unit, chances are we're going to run out of time to teach everything. And the tricky thing with history is that you're typically going chronologically and if you're missing a section or taking too long on certain sections, then your students might be missing out on really key areas. Both as a student as well as a teacher, you don't always make it to the more recent times. There's two types of backwards planning that are essential. Number one, backwards planning for the whole year, a very loose outline of when you're going to hit certain topics. We want to be rational about this, but we also want to make sure that we cut units where they need to be cut. This could be helpful in thinking of it from a monthly perspective, as well as incorporating natural breaks in the year, such as for winter break or spring break. Factor these in, and I usually only go to about the first half of May. I leave the second half of May open. Number one, certain units might have gotten pushed back. And number two, there tend to be a lot of end of the year type of activities that you obviously won't know when you're starting your planning. From a unit perspective then, it's important to, before you go into each unit, decide how you're going to break up that particular unit and what you'll plan. I always recommend planning at least two days that are just open because certain activities might take longer, maybe you'll have to do some reteaching for a certain concept, and sometimes there are those different school assemblies and random things that take away your teaching time. Start out with a full year plan and then go into the unit. Step number two is to apply the standards. Now, again, this is going to vary a lot. I will actually link Illinois standards below. I personally think they're pretty good and they focus a lot on skills, which we'll talk about very soon. But the idea is you want to make sure you're meeting the standards. Sometimes we get a little caught up in wanting to teach content more than skills. And at least the Illinois standards, they're not about the content at all. And so we want to make sure we prioritize what actually matters and what we are supposed to be teaching rather than getting caught up in the facts. The facts are great. Believe me, I'm a history nerd. I love it. But we want to make sure that we're doing right by the standards. And they typically revolve around skills such as literacy skills, inquiry skills. So that's really essential as you're planning your lesson to make sure you're hitting those. And at least the way I like to do it, I would print out a copy of the standards for our state and I would go through and I would highlight standards as I hit them within that unit. Just so it was easy for me to determine what I was hitting and what I wasn't so I knew what the students were going to learn. Step three is skills that you want your students to learn. This may be aligned to the standards but this could be other things as well. What skills are essential for our students in life? Unfortunately, not every class 
seems to pertain directly to that real life application. But I think in social studies, we have a really powerful chance to do that, especially depending on the types of activities you're incorporating. Think about what skills you want your students to learn and what types of projects or activities will allow them to build those skills. I know one of the things that I have loved doing the most is engaging projects and doing these fun projects, obviously you can connect it to your unit you're learning about. Maybe it's got some research elements or students are taking some of the information from class and going one or two steps beyond that. But if you can incorporate a fun and engaging project that also connects to these different skills, that's important. How can you incorporate financial skills? Obviously, literacy skills are very common. What kind of questioning techniques can we use with our students? What about different speaking skills, such as presenting or debating different topics? Tap into Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence theory and see what types of intelligences you can incorporate in projects. These are all really great lenses that we can use to decide what gets taught and what doesn't just based upon the skill set that our students can gain. Step number four, now that you've reflected about these different skills, is to really narrow it down and select two to three big things that you want to focus on. This could be a type of content. This could be a particular historical concept within that unit. It could be the projects that we talked about. This is so crucial because sometimes we spend way too long on a unit because we're doing so many cool things, which is awesome. I love all the cool things, but it's not awesome if we get off track and before we realize it, it's December and we only got through the material we thought we'd get through by the end of October. It happens. Don't feel bad about it, but try to prioritize. We can't do it all. There's limited time available. So what are the top two or three most important things you can do in that unit? That's what needs to be prioritized and scheduled first. Focusing on just a couple key concepts or projects that you really go more in depth with with the students is going to be what's more meaningful and memorable to them in the long run. And finally, step five is to fill in the gaps between those larger activities with smaller activities and smaller lessons. Not everything's going to be a showstopper and that's okay. I know personally, I do like to start out with a lecture typically one or two days worth. I do at the beginning of a unit for overview, but then I will not lecture again the rest of the unit. That's a personal choice. The lecture question is something we'll actually be discussing in a future video, but I find I like to do a general overview so kids kind of have the same sort of backstory they're working with, and then we can get into all the details of it, connect it back to that prior knowledge from the lecture, and really flourish in those different projects and activities. The timing thing gets tricky because we might feel like we want to spend more time talking about certain things then maybe we have time available. But what is important to remember is that really any topic in social studies or history, you could spend a unit talking about it. You could spend a whole year talking about it, or you could spend one day talking about it. It really depends. Yes, there's going to be things that you miss out on or that you gain no matter what the timing is. But for a perfect example, you can teach the American Revolution in one day. Yeah, it's going to be the highlights, but you can. You can spend a whole unit talking about it. You can spend a whole year doing that. I actually took a college class that was just on the revolution. So really, you've got lots of flexibility there, and there's not one right or wrong way of doing it. If you focus on the skills, the standards, what you want your students to gain out of the experience and really prioritize that, I think you'll find it's a lot more of a positive and meaningful experience. Thanks for watching episode one of We Teach History. Leave any questions or comments below and we'll see you next Thursday for episode two. Bye.